Welcome to Electron Online and in this video we're going to calculate the terminal velocity of a large metal sphere moving through water. So in this case we have a sphere that has a radius of 15 centimeters, it has a mass of 113 kilograms, it's a solid metal sphere about the size of a basketball. The velocity, well, it's not going to be 20 meters per second now, we want to find what the velocity will be when it reaches the terminal velocity and the, the water is at 20 degrees centigrade so we can calculate the viscosity coefficient. So the terminal velocity of an object moving through a liquid will be reached when the net force on the object equals zero. And the four forces are one, the weight, the force of gravity pulling it down, and then the three retarding forces, the buoyancy force, the force caused by the viscosity of the liquid, and the force caused by the drag of the object moving through the liquid. And so when all those forces upward equal the force of the weight downward, then we will have reached terminal velocity. So the net force can then be written as, the, that would be equal to the weight, mg minus the buoyancy force, minus the force caused by the viscosity of the liquid, and minus the force caused by the drag. And when that, of course, is equal to zero, then we will have reached terminal velocity. So let's plug in the numbers. So we have mg minus the buoyancy force, which is equal to the density of the liquid, the volume of the object, and the acceleration due to gravity, minus 6 pi times the coefficient of viscosity, the radius of the object and velocity, and then minus 1 half the, what we call the drag coefficient, the density of the liquid, the cross-sectional area, and since it's a sphere, we might as well put in what the cross-sectional area is. In this case, it would be pi times the radius squared and the velocity squared. And we take the whole thing and set it equal to zero. Now notice that this looks like a quadratic equation because this here is the constant, this here is the uh, variable to the first power and here's the variable to the second power so we have ourselves a quadratic equation notice that the sign in front of the square term is negative which means that it opens downward and it will cross the horizontal axis at two locations and so what we're trying to do now is find the locations where the parabola crosses the vertical axis or I should say horizontal axis because that's where the roots of the equation are and that's where we'll find the solution so what we're going to do is we're going to try and solve this as a quadratic equation, which means that this here is our C term, this here is our B term right here, oh, not the whole thing, but right here, this is our B coefficient, and this here is our A coefficient. So this becomes uh, C uh, minus B times V minus A times V squared is equal to zero. So we have to solve this quadratic equation. Now, it's probably better if we went ahead and uh, changed the signs around a little bit. So we could say this is equal to 0 is equal to uh, AV squared plus BV minus C. So what we need to do here now is we need to find what A, B, and C are equal to in our quadratic equation right here. And then we have to use, of course, the quadratic formula to solve this. So let's find out what A, B, and C are equal to. Now, a is the coefficient of the v squared right here, so let's do that. So, a is equal to, that would be 1 half times the drag coefficient, 0 0.47 for a sphere, the density of the liquid, which is water, pi, and then the radius squared, 0.15 quantity squared. So, that will give us the coefficient, a coefficient, in front of the v squared term. So, we have 0.5 times 0.47 times 1,000 times pi times 0.15 squared equals and that's 16.6. Now we need b as the coefficient. So b will be equal to 6 pi times mu which is 1.002 for water 20 degrees centigrade and the radius 0.15. So there let's see here we have 6 times pi times 1.002 and times 0.15 and we get 2.83 for that coefficient. And finally we need C. C would be the weight minus the buoyancy force, that would be 113 times G minus the buoyancy force which would be 1000 for the density of the liquid, the volume would be 
4 thirds pi times 0.15 cubed. There's a decimal point right there. And uh, G, 9.8. Okay. So 113 times 9.8 equals, that's 1107 minus the buoyancy force, which is 4,000 divided by 3 times pi times 0.15 to the third power and times 9.8 and that's 138 ah, round it off to 138 that's good and so what is 1107 minus 138 and that would be 969 all right so now that we have the three coefficients in our quadratic equation we can go ahead and solve our quadratic equation so we can say that v is going to be equal to minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c. But notice that c is a negative c, all divided by 2a, 2 times a. Okay, now let's go ahead and plug in the numbers. Equals to minus b, b is equal to 2.83, so minus 2.83 plus or minus the square root of b squared. Now notice that this minus times this minus makes that a plus, so plus 4 times a. a is 16.6 .6 and c is equal to 969. And the whole thing divided by 2a, that's 2 times and a is 16.6. .6. So that should give us the terminal velocity of our ball moving through the liquid. So working out what's on underneath the radical, <coughs> excuse me, so it's 4 times 16.6 .6 times 969. Take the square root, oh, let's do it again. 969 times 16.6 .6 times 4 equals. We have to add to that 2.83 squared plus 2.83 squared. Not that it makes a lot of difference in this case. Take the square root of that. All right, so now we have minus 2.83 plus or minus 253.7 all divided by 33.2 all right the only plausible answer here is the plus 253.7 because we can't have a negative terminal velocity it has to be positive terminal velocity remember with fluids the downward direction is the positive direction so we take that number minus 2.83 and divide that by by 33, 33.2 equals, and we get 7.56. All right, and so in this case, if we have a large metal sphere of a radius of 15 centimeters with a mass of 113 kilograms, as it's moving through the fluid, it will reach a terminal velocity under its own weight of 7.56 meters per second. So when the object is moving downward at 7.56 meters per second, the weight will balance out the three other forces. The buoyancy force, the force caused by the viscosity of the liquid, and the force caused by the, the what we call the drag coefficient, or the drag of the motion of the object in the liquid. And that is how we find the terminal velocity under those circumstances.